Hey there, Smarties. Welcome to smart to go Training Podcast, the channel that's all about sharing ideas and opportunities that make you smarter and richer. Ever wondered if there's hidden treasure out there with your name on it? Well, guess what? There just might be. Today's episode is diving into the exciting world of tax sale overages, a gold mine that most people don't even know exists. If you're ready to tap into this hidden wealth, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Now let's be smart. So, you know how we've been diving deep into these hidden financial opportunities, right? Wow. We'll buckle up because today we're jumping headfirst into the world of tax sale overages. Oh, yeah. Ever heard of them? Definitely. It's a fascinating little corner of the financial world. And we're talking about you know, surplus funds, those leftover dollars from real estate auctions that often just go unclaimed. Yeah. Sitting there just waiting to be rediscovered. It's kind of mind blowing when you think about it. In fact, JP Morgan Chase, they estimated that something like $14 million every single day ends up in these unclaimed overages. Every single day? Every single day. Wow. I mean, you start adding those numbers up and we're talking like potentially life changing sums of money here. Absolutely. Yeah. But OK, let's back up for a sec. How do these overages even happen? So it all comes down to that auction process. Mm -hmm. You know, when a property gets put up for a tax sale, usually because, you know, the owner hasn't paid their taxes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that property ends up selling for way more than the actual tax is owed. Right. That difference, that surplus, boom, that's your overage. So like in the example from Kim, the Legacy Creators book that we're looking at today, let's say someone owed, I don't know, $5,000 in back taxes on a property, right? Right. And then at the auction, someone swoops in, bids $50,000. Okay. What but, happens then? So the taxing authority would take their $5,000, leaving a, wait for it, $45,000 surplus. Wow. And that, my friend, is the overage. And that should rightfully go back to, in this case, the original owner. Precisely. But here's the thing, and this is the crazy part. Most people, they have no clue this money even exists. They might be struggling, you know, going through a rough time, completely unaware that there's potentially like this pot of gold waiting for them. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. It really is. And if they don't claim it, what happens? The government just steps in. Right? Sadly, yes. Hmm. It goes through this process called escheatment, which basically means it becomes the property of the state, mm -hmm. like finders keepers. But most people didn't even know they lost something in the first place. This whole thing, it kind of reminds me of, you know, those stories you hear about unclaimed inheritances or like forgotten bank accounts, you know? Oh, yeah. Makes you wonder what else is out there, just kind of floating around. It really does. But for us today, we're staying laser focused on those tax sale overages. And thankfully, we've got someone incredible to help guide us through all of this. Have you had a chance to um, learn much about Kim, the legacy creator and her work? Oh, absolutely. Her story is it's really something else. Talk about turning adversity into action. She's been through some tough financial times herself, and now she's completely dedicated to helping others navigate this world of overages and reclaim what's rightfully theirs. Incredibly inspiring stuff. And she does all this through this like really cool system that she developed called the GFF method, right? Right. Get, find, file simple. Yeah. Powerful. And it breaks this whole seemingly complex process into manageable steps. I like it. And the best part, anyone can do this. Anyone with the right knowledge and a little bit of guidance. So this GFF method, get, find, file, this is like our treasure map, right? Absolutely. So where do we even like start digging? Well, it all begins with that get, get your hands on the overages list. And honestly, it's probably a lot more straightforward than you might think. Really? Yeah. I was, I don't know, picturing some Indiana Jones kind of thing, <laughs> like digging through the archives. Thankfully, it's not quite as uh, adventurous as all that. A lot of times it's as simple as contacting that county tax assessor's office. You know, a quick phone call, maybe a quick little visit to their website. Okay. Now, Kim, she she actually gives us some really good insider lingo here in her book. She, she says, instead of asking for... Like the overages list, use specific terms like overages, excess funds, you know, overbid list, or even tax surpluses. Yeah. You know, you really want to speak the language when you're reaching out. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Cutting through the jargon, getting right to it. Exactly. But here's the thing, you know, you get your hands on that list and it can be a little overwhelming. Right. All those names, addresses, the figures. It's like, whoa. Yeah. But don't let it phase you. Kim's advice is start small, pick a state. Pick yeah. a county, get the hang of the process, 
then you go big time. Quality over quantity, right? Master it before you, yeah. yeah, before you branch out. Exactly. Like you don't start with a wedding kick when you're learning how to bake. Right, exactly. Start small. So we got our list. We're starting small. What's what's next on this treasure map? I mean, we've got to find the rightful owner of these overages, which, I mean, that sounds like could get kind of tricky. Well, this is where we put on our detective hats. <laughs> Kim talks about this a lot. You have to think like a detective. And that's where this whole idea of skip tracing comes in. You know, a little mix of uh, online research, you know, databases, public records. Mm -hmm. And, yes, yeah, sometimes a little bit of that old school sleuthing. So it's more than just plugging a name into Google and hoping for the best. Oh, absolutely. Remember, this is about people's lives. Yeah. We have to, you know, their financial well-being. you got to be sensitive, respect their privacy. We want to reconnect them with what's theirs, but we want to do it the right way. Yeah. So you're going to be looking for current contact information, maybe reaching out to relatives, maybe old associates, anything to track down the individual. And you know what? This is where Kim's personal touch really shines through. She's a huge advocate, even in this digital age we live in, for the handwritten envelope. Oh, yeah. I remember her mentioning that. Just a small little thing. Yeah. But it can be so powerful. It shows that you care. Exactly. You're standing out, demonstrating genuine effort. You know, it's that handwritten note that can really make all the difference in how people respond. Mm -hmm. And she actually, in her GFF Methoded Intensive Replay, she even gives examples of, like, what to write. Oh, that's really smart. Okay, so we've gotten the list. We've... We've channeled our inner detective. We found the rightful owner. And now it's the official part, right? The file. Yes. Time to make that claim. Okay. And here's where I can't emphasize this enough. Being meticulous is key. Right. Because now we're talking legal documents, notarized signatures. You have to be accurate. It's paramount. And this is something Kim really stressed, like finding a notary public that you trust, someone who can help kind of guide that claimant through what can be, you know, a little bit of a paperwork maze sometimes. Oh, for sure. Because you can do everything right. You can find the rightful owner. But even at this stage, things can still go wrong. Mm. Imagine putting in all that effort only to have it fall apart because of like a paperwork mishap. Oh, heartbreaking. I know. That's why she says, talk to your notary. Have a real conversation, set expectations, and make sure they understand the process, too, because that's going to minimize, you know, the risk of any delays or rejections. So it's about being thorough. Yes. Professional. Yeah. Making sure everything is signed, sealed, and delivered according to, you know, whatever the county state rules might be. Yes, 100%. No room for being sloppy when you're dealing with, with people's money, you know? Absolutely. And Kim... She really believes in transparency throughout this entire thing. You want to keep that claimant in the loop. Even if there's like no major updates, give them something, let them know, hey, you know, we're we're still working on it. Right. Keep that trust. Show them you're committed. Yeah, it's about treating people with dignity and respect throughout this entire journey. 100%. It's not just about the destination. It's the journey. Right. And the positive impact you can have along the way. It's about going above and beyond. You know, not just like processing a transaction. Yeah, you said it. Recognizing that there's a person, you know, at the heart of this whole thing. Right, yeah. exactly. And that actually brings us to something that Kim talks a lot about. The why. Why are we doing this? You know, what's the motivation? It's not just about, you know, making money. It's about making a difference, right? Exactly. Being a beacon of hope for these people, many of whom have gone through really hard times, Imagine being able to reunite them with funds they never even knew they were owed. I mean, it's got to feel amazing, right? Like, almost like you're handing them a life raft when they need it most. Absolutely. Yeah. And it can help them regain their dignity, too. Yeah. You know, after a rough time, maybe even restore their faith in humanity a little bit. Right. And this is where Kim's own story really shines through. You can just hear the genuine empathy in her voice when yeah. she talks about this work. Because she's been there. She's yeah, faced yeah. those same challenges. Mm -hmm. And that experience, I think really fuels her passion, her drive to help others move towards, you know, a brighter financial future. Totally. It adds such a powerful layer to this whole thing. It's not just about, you know, the steps, the paperwork. It's about approaching it with the right mindset from the very beginning. I completely agree. It's about recognizing that we have the potential, I mean, really, to transform lives here. Yeah. And not just for those receiving the overages, but even for those who are, you know, facilitating the process. It's a win-win, wouldn't you say? The claimant gets a much-needed boost, maybe even life-changing. Mm -hmm. And then the person who helped make it happen, they don't just benefit financially. They get that satisfaction of knowing they've made a difference. You really can't put a price on that. 
Couldn't agree more. And, you know, as we've gotten deeper into this whole world of tax sale over ages, the thing that really strikes me is just the sheer scale of it all. Think about it. Millions of dollars just sitting there, countless lives that could be touched. It really is like this kind of hidden treasure map waiting for someone with the right knowledge and the heart to unlock it. It really does make you think if you had the opportunity to make that kind of impact, not just in your life, but in the lives of others, wouldn't you at least want to dig a little deeper and explore the possibilities? It's something to think about for sure. Well, sadly, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive, but wow, what a journey it's been. If you want to learn more about uncovering hidden financial opportunities like tax sale overages, check out our show notes for links to Kim, the legacy creator's book, and her GFF method intensive replay. We'll see you next time, right here on The Deep Dive.